What's up, guys? <clears throat> My name is Marco. I'm a Mexican American. And I stand united with Donald J. Trump. Let me see, Paloma. What's up, Paloma? <laughs> big, big, big round of applause for Paloma, who's going to join us today. Let me see. Guys, I finally figured out how to use this freaking uh, broadcast when you invite somebody to join you. So let's see if it works with Paloma. Paloma, I think you have to have the phone um, portrait. No, this is portrait and that's landscape, landscape. So Olga, what's up? Mariela, mi prima. Prima, como estas? Un saludo hasta México. Uh, Maria de Jesus. Buenas tardes, Maria. Como estas? Como te va? Uh, Paloma, try again, she says. Uh, let's see. Um, connecting. Hi. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So guys, Hi, this, this is the first time that I'm able to do this uh, two on one. Tu también o ya lo habías hecho antes? No, never again. My first time. First time. Great. Great, great, first great. Time. So I wanna, my boss, Marco Gutierrez. I want to welcome Paloma to our conversation this evening. Uh, so I got three things going on, Paloma. One is they canceled and Anne Coulter was going to come here um, to Berkeley on the 26th. Anyway. They canceled her. Right, right. You know, what's, I, I don't, I don't get what's going on with Berkeley. I mean, what are, what are they looking for? Are they looking for... I mean, they're like provoking the president in any way that they can. That's how I see it. Right. So, Aurelio dice hola. Hi, Aurelio. <laughs> Aurelio is going to be the, the mayor of Torrance. Maria de Jesus says hola. Debbie says, uh, Taylor says hi. So, Paloma, what I did is on, on the Latino, official Latinos for Trump website, I added a section and it's called resources. Um, and I added the constitutional sound bites. And because you are our ambassador of constitutional sound bites, I wanted to bring you in today. So basically I put there constitutional sound bites, capsulas informativas and it's constitutional speaking. And I did talk to, uh, what's his name, uh, Jacob? No, what's the- David. David, David, David Stock, the, he's the author of a uh, constitutional sound bites in Spanish. It's called Cápsulas Informativas Constitucionales. So what can you tell us about that work? Uh, because I want to bring all this work. See, there is Marilyn, Marilyn Oquita is here. She is from um, San Diego and she's going to create a chapter for um, what they call um, California for make, making America great again. So a lot of people are gonna need our help, uh, Paloma, in how to bring this, this resource because it's, um, and tell them what it is a little bit so they know. Well, basically Constitutional Sound Bites um, is a book in, Sp there's two versions. There's a, um, an, an English version and a Spanish version about the founding documents of the United States of America, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. So, um, you know, the, the author's main purpose is to be able to educate the Hispanic community in Spanish, in our native language, which, 
you know, a lot of us, like me, that I'm Mexican, I was born in Mexico, even though I speak English, for me, I honestly prefer to, to read this information in Spanish. Uh, it's easier for me to, to grasp, to understand uh, in, my, in my native language. So I think this is, this is such a great idea. You know, I met the author at CPAC, and, um, and just that same morning that, the, the, the morning that I met David, David Stoke as the author, I, was, I made a video about, because I was at CPAC. So when you're at CPAC, you really get a feel for what the Republican Party is about. And it's about, it's, it's about America, and it's about, um, about be, what being a true American really means. So you get that, you get that, you know, you, you're surrounded by that at CPAC. And that morning I made a video about, you know, when people become citizens, I became a citizen, so I'm, I'm, I'm a naturalized American citizen. So I have to take a test, um, to be able to gain, uh, to, to obtain my citizenship. And that morning I made a video ex in Spanish actually explaining how, you know, we, we, we go to America, but we really don't understand how the country was founded, um, the, its history, and all the people that, that, all the main characters behind America's history. And that, you know, a couple hours after I made that video, I met David. And it was so weird. He literally, he couldn't believe that that morning I was making a video in Spanish telling people, you know, if we want to be a part of this nation, nation, we have to understand how it works, how it was founded. It's, um, it's documents, it's history, everything about it. You know, we, we really don't know. We just see it as one, one big, you know, that's how I, I, I notice people see it as like one big mall where you come to work, you know, you have malls, uh, McDonald's, shopping, fun, Disneyland, Disney World, New York, LA, Yeehaw down in Texas, you know, Disney World down in Florida. And um, so I think meeting David was, was kind of like meant to be for Latinos for Trump. And I'm so uh, glad and so proud that, that somehow we came together. And now uh, you're working with him as well, Marco. That's, it's, it's so perfect how things have been have been like falling into place for us. And, and I think we are the perfect people to promote this book because our people have to understand the American culture. And this book is perfect for that. Because I also, because <clears throat> I talked to David, he, he kind of wants us to, you know, sort of like take advantage. Uh, but I told him that we're really doing this pro bono, that we're not in here to make money. That, that we really want to be uh, of service to others. And, you know, Cantinfla said, educar mm -hmm. es gobernar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so mm -hmm. to educate is to govern. And I think mm -hmm. that, look, what I told David this morning is that I think that a lot of people that become naturalized, those 100 questions, it's a good start, but uh, they stop right there. They, they just go get their citizenship and, and, and that's it. And it's, there's so much more because I feel that a lot, a lot of people do not, do not fall in love with the fact that they're already citizens of this country and they're selling themselves short and they're not taking advantage of, of a beautiful gift that has given to them. And I think that this, this uh, constitutional sound bites translated in Spanish will help so many people it, it, and, mm -hmm. and so that they fall in love with this country like you have, and so that they're able to, um, uh, what's up, Rob? My arm's better. <laughs> My arm's feeling better. It, so that I have so much respect for Americans, and even though I'm an American too, but I still feel that I am a newcomer to this country. So I look at the Americans here as my sponsors. <laughs> I look at them as, as uh, because they've been here all their life. I wasn't. I was born and raised in Mexico. But I look at them with a, with a respect. And I feel like even Jorge Ramos this morning, uh, on, I don't know when he came out with a new video that so, said, stop lying. It, it, me dio risa. It, <laughs> almost, it's a one-minute video that he put nationally. This is stop lying in English. Uh, but I feel that... In Espanol, we say, uh, ojalá no se haya mordido la lengua, right? It, mm. Because he's the one that's lying. So we feel that, I feel that we have to educate uh, Hispanics in this country so that we can fight 
the front lines like it is Jorge Ramos and start right there. So to equip people, and I, I listened to your uh, translated soundbite in your, in your YouTube. So how can we, are we going to see more of that so that we can use those, those translator? Or how are you going to do that? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, right now I've taken two of the 150 questions uh, from the book. The book has 150 questions translated uh, into Spanish. And one of them was about uh, the Constitution and human rights. So that's, that was a very important one. That's the second one that I did. Um, I will work more with David, uh, you know, so we can get previews of the book. And so people can really see what this is about. And, um, and I think that by doing it in Spanish, it makes it so easy for them. And, and I'm trying to make it into such a, um, you know, easy way for them to understand and, and try to read it in, in, in such a way that, that they, can, they can understand it really well. You know, just the way I would not, not, not make it sound like a book or like, you're, or like a class, but more like you, you're just having a conversation with them and helping them understand why America works. Um, you know, human rights, which is something that, you know, I'm in Mexico right now. Human rights is something that is violated constantly here in Mexico. And it's something that, that, we, that I remember in the U.S. we've always had. And that was one of the main contrasts that I noticed growing up in both countries. I always felt safe. I always, I always felt protected in the U.S., which is a feeling I can't really say that I always have here. You know, I, I've been kidnapped. I've been... Uh, you know, put in jail under under false, um, you know, charges and stuff like that, which is something that I don't think would ever happen uh, in the U.S., especially not 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Things have been changing, and this, this which is why one of the reasons why I've been so concerned about what's going on in the U.S., because it's corruption that was taking over. And this is why I was so uh, mm -hmm. passionate and out there about pre uh, uh, President Trump becoming president, because I didn't want the U.S. to end up like Mexico. So when I read parts of the book, like I have for, for, for that, for, uh, you know, for uh, human rights, natural rights, I, I try to make it so that, so that our Hispanic community understands how lucky we are, how lucky we are in the U.S. to have these rights, to, to uh, for, for the Constitution to protect the people that way and and embrace it and take advantage of it and and uh, um, and you know not take it for granted like people you know some people they, they take it for granted because they don't even really know about it they don't you know this is why uh, things have been changing so much because the like say the cops in, in Los Angeles they're not really going by American law anymore they're going they're, they're it's kind of like like a, a, another version of Mexico. And this is what I was so concerned about over the past 10 years. So yeah, we're gonna be doing more, more samples of the book because I think once you get an idea of what the book is about, people are, are really gonna want, they're, they're gonna wanna read. It's, it's so easy to understand, especially for Spanish speaking people in Spanish, you know? Somebody's saying that we should have a, a book tour uh, in Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> even in, even in, I mean, everywhere in California, we have the, the Hispanic population in California is so large. And I think, I mean, it's not so much that they don't want to understand how it works. It's just that they just don't, they, they have no resource. So if, one, uh, one small thing, let me, let me put some, uh, uh, before you go on something else there, I was talking to David and, and something that he told me that I didn't know uh, is that the constitution of Mexico in the Constitution of the United States, right? Article one of Constitution of Mexico, it tells you that the, the rights uh, are the ones that the government gives you. But in the, in the United States Constitution, your rights, you are born with those rights. And that, that's the big difference between the Mexican Constitution and the Constitution of the United States of America, that you are born with these rights, and you know how to explain that probably better, but in Mexico, those the, those rights are only the ones that the government gives you and they can take them away anytime too that's sort of like the way he explained it well i mean it's not necessarily that they can take them away but but they do violate they do violate um your rights and and the constitution here trust me we have we have a saying um in spanish que se pasan la constitución por por donde se les antoja okay you know you know, that's basically, and, and we, and, and that's very common here. I mean, I've, I've stood in front of a judge 
and she put me in jail for telling her that. <laughs> so that's how Mexico works. Yeah, I did. I mean, I was in Tijuana and and we had an incident and I told the judge, I said, you know, you, you got to get the constitution out from under your desk and, and really read it, you know, uh, garantias wow. individuales. That's what they're called here, natural rights. They're called garantias individuales. And, um, and you know, it's like Mexican government does whatever they want with your, with, with your natural rights. So, so it's not that they take them away legally, but, but they do anyway. And uh, so that's one thing we really have as Hispanics, as naturalized citizens that we really have to value in the U.S., that we have those rights. The natural, because I see a lot of people says that that's my um, born right, uh, mi derecho de nacimiento. So it, it's a great, so I put, I put a page on official Latinos for Trump. If you're not, if you're not, uh, if I haven't signed up for um, official Latinos for Trump, go. It's, we have had a lot of problems with our page. <laughs> it was hacked and <laughs> a lot of people don't like us out there. Uh, mm. But we're, we're, st <laughs> we're starting with a new one and we have this blog and also there's people out there that are writing for the blog. I sent you an invite, uh, Paloma, I don't know if you did, did you receive an invite to be a blogger? I no? did, I did. Uh, when I tried to access it, it had expired. So I sent you an email uh, to see if you could send me another one. Okay, I'm going to send you another one so that you can start writing your, your own ideas uh, and, all, and how you can help everybody and how to um, use this book to the best. Because the, I went to Amazon, and actually, I, my wife and I, we have, uh, we have a Prime Amazon, so I can read it for free. Right. Yeah. It was you. It was there was like a three day thing where you could download it for free, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So if anybody has out there uh, Amazon, and you can read it, and it's it's amazing because I'm reading things that. Uh, you know, like article, like Article One of the Constitution, and then I'm. I'm, I'm seeing so many things that we hear, uh, we hear from Congress people talk about, and, 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 uh, and I see how much, um, how, how much political power can the Hispanic community have if they only knew all this? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because I see that most Hispanics, well, a lot of people are there, a lot of, a lot of people, but mostly Hispanics, all they do is complain but we don't do anything about it. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Like we do in our countries. It's very similar that what it's kind of like what's happening in, 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 in places like Mexico and Mexico, you know, people complain. And that's, I, I met with someone from the military yesterday. Uh, he had a pretty high rank and he said, you know, unfortunately in, in, uh, in places like Mexico, all people do is complain, but they don't get together and really do anything about it. You know, which in, in the US, we already have, this is why President Trump become president because people really came together and voted and went out and enforced their, 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 their right to vote and their voice, which is what people don't do in, in countries like ours, like Mexico. And most of the uh, immigration in the US, the Hispanic immigration is Mexican, even though there are people from other places, but you know that most of it is, is Mexican. So if we take that mentality and we do that in the US, you know, it's it's not doing, it's not gonna help, it's not gonna give us a voice. And uh, and so, you know, that's uh, what Bianca talks about in Texas. She taught, she's doing her DMIT tour. Tell me, we, we, want, we wanna get you involved. Your voice matters. Maybe it doesn't matter in Mexico, but it matters here. And you can make a change and you can be a difference. And we need to be out there with numbers and we need to be active. We can't just sit back at home and complain and write, you know, and complain and complain and criticize. And which is what, you know, that's what happens in our countries. But that's also because the government has made it so corrupt and so difficult for the people to really have a voice. So, you know, that's how they feel. They're, they're disillusioned, basically. To, to do anything. Because right now, I, I was looking at numbers, and really, they have, I believe they have reported probably like 30% more of what Obama did before within a month or something. But it's, it's, very, it's not like an, an alarming uh, number that they're deporting. So, but people would rather just go on the streets and march and say, uh, fight, be defiant, 
so, uh, so fight like we're, aquí estamos y no nos vamos like we're here we're not going rather than they go to the book and read and, and find out really what the rights are because how can you fight the rights that you don't know and ignorance is not a defense in law legally ignorance is not a defense a voluntary <laughs> there's a term called voluntary ignorance so a lot of these people their defense is um based on just fears and emotions it's not, it's not fear on the book on what it is that you know um, i feel that thousands and thousands of people like you and me that are mexican americans if they would have equip themselves better, they, we could have more political power, so the, the needs of all these people will, will be met in a, in a healthy and a legal way. Don't you think? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, it's, it's all about education. They're, they're misinformed, or not even misinformed, they're, they, just, they just don't, you know, they, they don't have enough knowledge. And um, I don't know if you remember this, me talking to you back in January about getting, uh, going to younger kids and all through education, you know, going to high schools and educating these, these kids about what the country is really about and sort of giving them also a comparison uh, of the U.S. compared to their own country, you know, their country of origin, their parents' country of origin, so that they understand um, what America, what the United States of America is really about. And so, so, so like you said, in a healthy way, fight for their rights, enforce their, their rights, and mm -hmm. also integrate mm -hmm. into the culture, which is what they're not doing because they don't even understand it, you know, like flying the Mexican flags in Pennsylvania. That's Maria, never going to get them. Maria de Jesus just said that the Bible says that for lack of knowledge, the people will perish. Uh, it, 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 yeah, and, and something else is that we as Hispanics, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to a lot of the people that are, that are uh, afraid right now and all that. But the thing is that you're talking about the kids, the high schools and all that. Kids cannot be happier than their parents. It, it, it's psychology, that's psychology 101, okay? It took me 12 years to learn that. Kids cannot be happier than their parents because they feel guilty. So if, if, you're, if you are more successful than your dad, usually you will, out, you will sabotage yourself. Mm. Uh, you know, and that's why people have a lot of problems, sometimes drugs and all that and, and that. So what, I've, what I have seen is that also kids in that age, they don't want to be American. They don't feel the freedom to be American because they feel guilty and they feel that they're betraying the, their family, their family, or their parents, because they <laughs> they came from a country that basically failed them, and, and I don't think that's fair for these kids. I think these kids should be able to feel as American as they want to be, and right now the um, the border patrol is having a hard time filling all the vacancies. They want to get five thousand more highway patrol uh, officers, so they were interviewing a bunch of kids that went on the Hispanic side and some people that are just new Hispanic people that they, they don't want, they don't want to do it. They don't want to become a, a border patrol officers because they feel they're betraying uh, uh, Mexico or the parents. So what do you think about that? I mean, I think that's pretty obvious even now, even with the people that are border uh, patrol now, and I always talk about this, and it's also happening with pe uh, places that I've seen, like LAPD. I don't know if you noticed, uh, I don't know if you remember a woman, uh, she was a homeless woman um, that was defending the uh, President Trump star on Hollywood Boulevard last year. She was attacked. She was attacked by, by anti-Trump people. And they, they made fun of her, and they said, well, what do you, who are you going to call? You're going to call LAPD? They're all Mexican. They're not going to help you. So, yeah, you know, you, it's, you see that, and you also see that at the U.S. border. I mean, you know that I cross sometimes once, twice a week in Tijuana, you know, by, by car. And things are changing because the, the, new, like the new generation of immigration of ICE agents are more and more Mexican, but more, you know, not, not like third-generation Mexicans like they used to be. 
well, but but I do feel it's some type of guilt. I, I really do. Like they all, it's almost like they want to help people, you know, um, because they have that guilt of feeling like they are Mexican, it's even like, though they were. Born. It's like being a police officer and you see somebody robbing a store and, and, and rather than apprehend him, you, you, you want to, you feel bad for them or you want to help them. And it's, 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 uh, it's a very, uh, I don't know. I think that they have indoctrinated people to a, to a, a way that it, it's, uh, their duty as, as agents, they're interfering. Their, their emotions are interfering with that duty. Um, no, with that completely, completely. I've been noticing that for years. So that, that's, yeah. uh, again, if we have, if this, that's how this book can help because then all these agents, maybe we should give the book to all those agents too. <laughs> so they read it and they see, look, this is what you're protecting. You are protecting something okay. that, that if it wasn't because of this, we wouldn't have the country that we have. Because see, yeah, you and see you know, that's how do you feel when you go, what, the way I feel when I go out of this country and I come in, I feel the big difference and I feel the protection that you don't feel in other countries. Do you feel that way too? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, in Mexico, I fear the police. In the U.S., I still respect the police. Even with everything that's been going on over the past few years, because things definitely have changed. And they've changed a lot, Marco. I mean, I remember uh, standing in front of a judge. I had a traffic ticket and I told her, I said, you know, cops are here to serve and protect. They're not here to, to uh, attack us as, as, as citizens. And, uh, and I remember growing up in California and feeling so much respect and protection by the police, which I still do, don't get me wrong, it's just not as much, things have changed. But in Mexico, you fear the police, unless they're your friends or something. You know, you really, you don't know who you can trust. Um, you never know if your rights are gonna be violated. Um, you never know if they're gonna stop you and make something up which happens all the time. You never know if they're gonna rob you, if they're gonna try to blackmail you for something to get money from you. So yeah, I mean, that's one of the major differences, especially when you, when you go back and forth, you really notice it, I really do. So what do you think is the best way to get this book? Uh, uh, do you think, I did a page, and I think I, I made you an administrator or, uh, out of it, uh, of it in Facebook. What's the best way okay. for people, I know Maria wanted the book, What's the best way to go about this book? Uh, or do you want them to get a hold of you and then you sell it to them? Or, or I know we have a, a, you have a GoFund account. Can we send that out there? I mean, yeah, well, well, what we've done right now is we've created uh, a GoFundMe, which is not, I mean, it's tech, it's a GoFundMe, but basically it's a way for people to donate so the book can be distributed for free. To the to the Hispanic community, so you be, you know you make a donation. I believe it's I, I think it's thirty five dollars, and um, and you can donate a book to anyone that you want. So we're able to uh, get these books out to the Hispanic community so that they don't you know that they don't have to pay that person doesn't have to pay for the book, but they can start reading and start understanding and educating themselves educating themselves. And I I do think having a, a book tour, especially in cities like LA or if you're near San Francisco. So in San Francisco, those cities are so important to target Marco because these, these people have no idea where they're standing. They have no idea what the country is about. And a lot of them are really good people. They just don't, they don't have any resources. They, they have no way to find, I mean, it's not like they're going to, you know, a lot of them don't even speak English. So it's not like they're going to go to school they, and there is no school for them to go to in Spanish to learn about the, uh, American Constitution or the or the uh, Declaration of Independence or how they relate to each other and um, in any any of that. So I think this book is so awesome, you know, constitutional sound bites. I mean, this guy, he had a vision. He uh, he worked with a Cuban doctor who is a, she has a master's in languages. So her translation is nearly perfect. It's amazing. So easy to understand. So, yeah, through maybe uh, tours. Uh, go to the GoFundMe. It's again constitutional sound bites. GoFundMe. I'll share it on my page. You can share it on your page, and through I think the Latinos for Trump website is a perfect place to to get the word out about the book. And I, I mean, we'll just find different ways. We're making a video um, to promote the book. So as soon as that's out, I'll um, I'll share it with with Latinos for Trump, and maybe through Dime with uh, with Bianca. You know, because she wants to start doing those tours in California too. 
we need to get people involved. We need to bring them in. They need to understand that the Republican Party uh, for the legal American citizens, even though they're Hispanic, the Republican Party is not against them. They're not Democrats. Mm -hmm. They're conservative. And and, uh, and they need to be heard and they need to feel included. They need to be they need to feel like they're a part of it. And mm -hmm. which is, you know, why what pushes them away so much. They feel completely left out like they do in their own countries. Great. You know, actually, uh, there Maria is asking if the book is translated. Yeah, Maria, uh, as, as uh, Paloma was saying, this book was translated by a uh, linguist, uh, a professional linguist, uh, this person that it's a doctor in uh, Idiomas? Doctora de idiomas? Le a language? Yeah, Ma she has a master's in languages. Yeah, maestría en idiomas. Uh, her name is uh, Dr. Bertha Arias. She's Cuban. She's in Miami. And her translation, I mean, I'm telling you from uh, from a Mexican, I, you know, I, I live in Mexico most of the time and I speak perfect Spanish. Her translation is perfect. So it's really easy. It, I mean, they really, really worked hard to make the translation nearly perfect. Perfect. So that anyone, any Spanish-speaking um, citizen can understand it very and very easy, not very, not complicated language, not just so simple and easy to understand. And I, you have no idea how. Um, hold on one second. Um, um, you have no idea how happy it makes me to be able to read them both in Spanish because it's so easy for me to understand. So. And you know, I, again, I try to make it as as conversational and and easy to understand as possible, so people can really enjoy it. I mean, you know, now that I've been I've been taking different questions from the book, I'm like, oh, I just want more and more and more because this is this is so awesome. I, I feel more and more like an American, like a patriot. I really do. Before, I just kind of you know, I grew up with in in a very like uh, white dominant area, so that really helped me, I guess. Uh, feel more like an American, but with this book, it's just kind of like it just brings it all together. It's an amazing, amazing book because of the way it's translated. I mean, it's content, and then the way it's translated. And also, what I, I want to say to uh, everybody out there right now is that David, the way he uh, has set up this book is so that we, you know, sound bites is a little bit of the time, and he said he wanted to make create groups of support, not just to give you a book, but to also get um, all the questions answered by, by him or by you through him, uh, by him through you or through, through, through us, through Latinos for Trump. So um, I will be buying man, many of them, says Maria. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah Maria, I get, get them out, please help us. Help us educate people. That's our main, main. You know, you you mentioned something really important at the beginning, Marco. You said, you know, we're not we're not in this to to make money, and you know, it, it it's we're we're uh, you know, everyone sometimes of course the book is going to sell, and it, it some some things are all about money. But honestly, to me, uh, and you can ask David, this is to me it was like a blessing to find this book. It was it it gave us such as Latinos for Trump. It gave us such an important resource to be able to, to have. We didn't have any tools. We really didn't have any tools. I mean, we want to educate people, but how? How do we educate people, you know? And um, and I honestly feel that through this book, I'm also educating myself, obviously. So, you know, if people ask me now about the U.S. Constitution or, or how the country really works, I'm able to tell them. I'm able to defend my president so much better than I was able to do it two months ago. You know, I understand human rights. I understand so many of the things or just, you know, the differences and, and things that maybe I didn't understand um, a while back. I do now and, and I'm able to have a better conversation, a better argument or whatever. Last night I had uh, an, an argument with one of my friends because he, he really flipped out about me, me my, my, my hat, you know. And when I'm able to explain it, uh, from things that I've learned from the book, it, it got to the point where he was like, okay, that's it, you win, you know? Not in a bad way, but, like, he got it. He got it because because once you're able to explain it with, with, with you know, information, uh, education backing you up, it makes an entire, it's, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, because you're able to document your, your, what you're saying. There, there was a, a uh, I'm part of a support group, so I, I have learned how to, 
uh, how to take care of myself, the world I, uh, the people that live around me and the world I live in. Um, so there was a, an old man that told me once, yeah, when I, was a, when I was a little boy, my dad used to tell me, make sure you're, go make sure you're a good boy. And the guy, would, the, the guy said, he, he, I would say, yes, yes. And then he would go and sit in a corner some, somewhere in there. And he's like, hey, how the hell am I going to do that? <laughs> you know, how am I going to be a good boy if you don't know what a good boy is? So how are you going to defend the Constitution of the United States of America if you don't know what the Constitution is? Right. Uh, so right. this book will, <laughs> this book will help us uh, and me, you know, because, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I've been trying to, to say that, yeah, I, I, when I became a U.S. citizen, uh, I sworn to, to uphold and defend the Constitution, but, but I need to do a little bit more than just the, the 100 questions, and I need to learn about this. So this book comes in handy. Okay, so if, if you send me that GoFund, I'll put it on the page, and then uh, okay. just, uh, let's just start rolling this because I think there are so many people out there that will – We'll use this book, and then uh, we'll take it from there and how to do the support groups. Maybe we'll do a, a, month, a phone call where all, everybody can, can uh, dial in, and then uh, Mr. David can do a little 20-hour uh, speech on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know, and, and the... Preguntas y respuestas, I don't know. Preguntas y respuestas. You know, we also talked about us having... Um, like Latinos for Trump, recruiting people and having these conferences that we talked about, that would be such an awesome venue and such an awesome way for, for the book to get out because we would have something to say, look, this is, you know, this is what, this is what we all need to learn. To learn. Um, this is what we need to understand. We need to unite as Hispanics in America, as Mexican Americans or, or naturalized Americans or whatever we are, we need to fight for our country now. This is our country. And this is what our country is about. Because a lot of us don't even know what it's about. You know, like I said, I, I grew up with Americans. So it's kind of like I just learned it naturally. But I really didn't. And now that I start reading this book, I'm like, oh, this is why people behave this way. And this is why people do the things that they do. So it's really, it's, it's such an amazing um such an amazing resource, such an amazing book to, to uh, help you understand the way th things have always worked and why now citizens are so upset with what their country has become. It's not that they are racist against us, it's that they, they had something that worked and some of us as Hispanics are taking that and by not understanding it, we're changing it. And you don't, you don't want to take something that works and change it. So, um, yeah, so I think those those conferences would be a really awesome place to get to to also get that book and have support groups and questions and answers, Marco, and uh, and maybe you know do videos and, and and read different parts of the book and get people interested and get people to see how easy the book is to understand because you know it's uh, no one wants to read the Constitution, you know, it's a, it, to, especially Hispanics. I'm, you know, we're a little like, we're a little lazy. We don't like to read all that much sometimes, you know, it's true. I mean, but by making it fun and making it interesting. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that because Jorge Ramos is going to get mad. I did say that <laughs> in, in, in Cleveland, that Hispanics were lazy and everybody got really mad at me. But I, I said not lazy. I'm, they're like, they're the hardest working people. Well, yeah, we're very hardworking people. But when it comes to reading, when it comes to learning about our rights, we're very lazy. Uh we don't we don't want to we don't want to read the instructions uh in the box when we buy something we just want to <laughs> go ahead and go for it but, yeah uh, right so okay anything else that you want to tell us paloma thank you so much for taking our call all the way in el valle uh valle bravo in mexico valle de bravo valle de bravo, valle de bravo. um thank you so much for inviting me marco i think this this book um again it's such an amazing resource i think it's such an important tool for us because we have we have something in spanish in spanish backing us up i mean not just in english and out there you know president trump and defending him saying he's not a racist and us fighting for that but saying you know a way to get to into people's homes because that's what we want we want that book at every hispanic family in america we want them to have this book 
and use it as a reference, you know? Well, I want, I want to ask you something. Uh, I, I want to donate the first book. I want, if David can please sign it and send it to Jorge Ramos. Uh, 